Hey guys, here we uh, go for our final um, online lesson video for College Trig. Um, it's our last content, and uh, you know, you seniors have finals next week anyways, so uh, this will be the last one of these video tutorials I'm going to do. Um, the next lesson, lesson 10 from this week, is uh, just some overall review and practice from all the units of the semester. And then the next lesson I post after that is going to be your final assignment. So everything will be due on May 7th, which is a week from Thursday. So whatever you want grade for, grades for, make sure they're in. That goes the same for juniors as well. Um, however, if you're a junior and you're just kind of struggling keeping up with stuff, let me know. I'll work with you on a case-by-case -case basis. Otherwise, I'm going to assume that everyone in this class um, is making sure they're done by May 7th. So, that said, uh, let's go ahead and get into this last stuff. So, solving trig equations. We've already essentially kind of done this, just not in a bunch of different numeric ways. So, it's uh, pretty much basic in terms of the steps you take to solve an equation. Handle all extra numbers outside the trig function. Evaluate the inverse function exactly with the circle or approximately calculator. Um, it may produce many, many, many answers. I'll show you how to find some of those um, because remember, trig functions are never ending and cyclical. So technically, every one of these has an infinite number of answers. And then handle all extra numbers inside the trig function if necessary. So let's uh, jump right in. Um, just threw a unit circle on here so I can access it, show you guys what I'm looking at. And here's our good example. Solve for all values of x between 0 and 2 pi. You are more often than not going to be given some sort of range like that. Um, in this case, it's one rotation in radian mode, which makes this equation true. 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. So we want to handle the numbers outside the trig function to isolate the trig function. So the way that you normally know how to solve equations. Get rid of the one first, divide by two, sine x equals one half. Now, on a calculator we can do this. Oops. Hold on, let me erase that. Got ahead of myself. On a calculator we can type it in as the inverse sine, one half in radian mode, since we're in radian mode. Um, but depending on the instructions in the problem, that may or may not give us something worthwhile. So inverse sine, one half, is this random number. And it goes on forever, 0 0.5234. Five, nine, so 0 0.5236, um, but that's not all the numbers between 0 and 2 pi, and it's not very exact. So another way to look at it is we are looking for anywhere on the unit circle, the y is 1 half, the sine is 1 half. So on my unit circle here, I have a 1 half positive there, and 1 half positive there. So my answers between 0 and 2 pi are pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Those would be my two possible answers. Solve for our values. So pi over 6, 2 pi over 6. Okay. Uh, remember that when you're doing inverse functions, it is going to restrict your range. And inverse sine is only going to give us stuff over here. And so that's always going to produce one of your answers. The other answer is going to be on the other side somewhere. Okay, and it's not always 100% predictable uh, how to find it. Um, so yeah. Let's try another one. All right. Solve for all values of x, which makes this equation true. So the all values adds an extra layer of difficulty here. Um, so I'll show you what that means in a minute. So 2 sine pi x equals square root of 3. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by 2. 
square root of 3 over 2. Now, my trig function is isolated. There is an additional pi inside, but that's fine. I'm going to write pi x equals inverse sine of square root of 3 over 2. And once again, that is sine, so square root of 3 over 2. Let me get rid of some of these extra marks. Find a square root of 3 over 2 on the um, y value that's positive, square root of 3 over 2 here, and there. So pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. And this doesn't say if it needs to be in degrees or radians, so I'm going to do degrees just to mix it up. So 60 and 120. Or actually, no. Sorry, I take back that. Uh, the pi on the inside here is a good indicator of radians, that radians, even if it's not required, is going to work better. So now I have the inside, pi x equals pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Okay. <clears throat> and now I'm going to go ahead and solve for x in each one of these. Divide by pi, divide by pi, I get 1 third. I get 2 thirds. Okay. So those are technically my answers in 0 to 2 pi. Um, however, this doesn't give us a, a domain to look in. This doesn't give us a 0 to 2 pi, it just says all answers. So the problem with that is we then have to go ahead and think about, well, it is 1 third, but it is also plus NP, I'm going to say a number times the period, because every period it's going to repeat itself. So if remember the period is 2 pi over b, in this case b is pi, 2 pi over pi is 2. So 1 third plus um, 2n. And same thing here, 2 thirds plus 2n. That gives you all possible answers, all infinite answers. Because every time I add 2 to this, it's going to give me um, a solution. So 2n just means I can add 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, whatever I want. So sometimes you have to do that extra step, figure out the period, and add it on to the end with an n. More often than that, you don't, though. Just throw that out there. There are some quadratic types. Uh, this is the trickiest I'll do here on a video. There are some harder ones we could have done in class, but this is as far as we'll go for the video. So just like you'd normal, normally solve a quadratic, set the equation equal to zero, then fully factor the non-zero side, set each factor equal to zero, and then solve using the previous steps. So you're essentially creating yourself a couple, um, a couple problems within one. And these can have lots of answers. We can have tons and tons and tons of answers on these ones. So let's just try one. 2 sine squared x minus sine x minus 1 equals 0. Solve for all values of x between 0 and 2 pi. So um, I don't like factoring unless it's an x. So I'm going to rewrite it. 2x squared minus x minus 1. Okay. And the 2 on the front, we can't get rid of. So if I do 2 times negative 1, negative 2. Factors that make negative 1 in the middle, negative 2, 1. And now I split that to negative x in the middle. Remember, that's the convenient step we learned in college algebra to factor by grouping. Because now if I look at the first half and the last half individually, I can pull out a 2x. Left with x minus 1. Over here, nothing to pull out, so I just pull out a 1, x minus 1. 2x plus 1, x minus 1. Except those x's are sine x's. So, we factored it. And now we set each of the individual parts equal to 0. and solve them individually. So here's where we do what I was doing in the previous slides. So minus one divided by two, 
negative one half. So I want the inverse sine of negative one half over here. Um, just add the one to the other side. So sine x equals one. So x equals inverse sine of one. So I'm looking on my unit circle anywhere I see a negative one half or a one in my y value. So let me get rid of those circles. A negative one half or a one for the y value. Uh, there's a one. Mm, there's a negative one half. There's a negative one half. So my answers are pi over two. 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. So, uh, depending on how the question is phrased, those could be all your answers. You might need to add that uh, period in. Um, but this one is just all the values between 0 and 2 pi, which makes it true. And that one worked. And let's just do some simple numeric ones to wrap this up. Um, because you don't always have to do the exact value. If you don't, it's actually kind of easier. Um, and it's kind of easy to see um, if exact value is even possible. So in each of these, um, I just got to isolate the trig function first. So minus 5 divided by 3 over here. So 13.31 minus 5 divided by 3. So I have tangent theta equals 2.77. 2.77 is not on the unit circle. Okay. Any, I mean, you're you pretty much know the numbers you're looking for on the unit circle by now. One half square root of two, three over two, okay, square root of two over two, one, zero, stuff like that. So if it's not on the unit circle, just go ahead and inverse tangent that number and then depending on uh, the instructions let's just sit in degree mode um, it may be degree it may be radian just look at the instructions of the problem I forgot to copy them onto here inverse tangent 2.77 is 70 point let's say 15 degrees okay Over here, minus the 2 divided by 6. 5 minus 2 divided by 6. I get 1 half. This one could be an exact value problem. Um, it could be. It might not be. Um, it just depends on what the instructions say. So let's go ahead and just do it with an inverse trig function. Oops. Inverse cosine. And it went away. Of one half is 60 degrees. So if it's an exact value in here, you're going to get an exact value over there. Um, the only problem is it's only ever going to give you one answer, even though if we go back to the inner circle, a cosine of one half occurs there and there, so it's 60 and 300. Um, so just saying that. If you need more than one answer, make sure you get more than one answer. But you can really only do that with exact values. And uh, I'm just going to give you answers down here. Um, make sure that you can get them yourself. So this one is going to be a... Let's do that real quick. A 120 degree. And this one over here, right above my head. Is going to be an 81.99 degree. So, should give you what you need uh, to get through these problems. Okay, let me know if you have questions, concerns. Also, let me know if you're unsure about what I said at the start of the video involving the review and the final. Um, since this is the last video lesson I'm going to do. So make sure you're reaching out. Okay, I'll have my office hours and the sign up like usual this week. 
and hope to hear from some of you guys. Hope you guys are at least uh, somewhat enjoying your end of the year. And uh, I'll see you at some point.